Okay, so now that we got our application working in a Docker container and we can access it from our local machine, uh, let's see what happens when we change our code. So I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my index.js file and I'm gonna just tweak something. Right here it says uh, we're sending an H that says hi there. I'm just gonna add a couple of exclamation points. We'll save that. And I'm gonna minimize this and let's hit refresh. Let's see what happens. We hit refresh, nothing happens. We don't see the exclamation points. So for some reason, our code didn't get updated. And I want you to think about why that is. It's actually a really simple answer, right? Uh, basically what happens is, first of all, we have to take our Docker file, we have to build an image. So we built an image and then we built a container from it. Now we changed our code to add the exclamation points, but our image that we created from our Docker file was run before we made these changes. So the code in that image does not have the exclamation points. And, and so basically our image has a stale version of our code, which means our container, which is running from that image has a stale version of our code. And we could prove that if we do a Docker exec and go into our code, uh, if I do an LS, uh, we could see our index.js file and I do a cat, which is just gonna print the contents of that file. If I do an index.js, you could see that there's no exclamation point. So it's running a stale version of the code. So how do we actually update that? Well, it's actually very simple. Uh, first of all, make sure you change, uh, save all your changes. And uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rebuild that image. Well, first of all, let's delete our container. We don't need it anymore. And let's rebuild the image. So where's that build command? So build, right? So now uh, if you take a look, uh, you'll see that um, because our source code changed, it had to run step five once again. Uh, so now if we do a Docker image LS, this new image, which we named it as the same name as we had before, uh, now has the new exclamation points built into the image. So if we deploy this image with a Docker run command, it's the same exact Docker run command, hit enter. And now if we go back to our, our um, web browser, hit refresh, we can now see the exclamation points. So that explains why um, our code didn't automatically get updated. However, I'm sure you're thinking, well, this is kind of a strenuous process uh, for when you update your code, right? Every time I make a change, I don't wanna have to uh, rebuild an image and redeploy a container. That's a very slow process. That's gonna slow down your development time. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how we can work around that because that's obviously not um, sustainable. You can't be rebuilding an image and rerunning a container every time you make one tiny uh, change in your code. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make use of something uh, called, uh, we're gonna make use of volumes. So within Docker, we have uh, volumes, which allows us to have persistent data in our containers, um, but there's a very specific type of volume called a bind mount in Docker. And this is a special, uh, this is a special volume because it, what it allows us to do is it allows us to sync a folder in our local host machine, on our, in my Windows machine in this case, it allows me to sync a folder or a file system to a folder within our Docker container. So what I can do is I can take all of these files and sync them into the slash app directory of our container so that we don't have to continuously rebuild the image and redeploy a container. Every time we make a change, it'll automatically sync those two for us to really speed up the development process. So let me show you guys how we can do that. Uh, so we're gonna delete our container. And what I'm gonna do is we don't need to rebuild our image. The image is just fine. Um, but I'm gonna hit up a few times so we can get to this run command. So we're gonna use the same exact run command. And we're gonna pass in uh, a new flag. Uh, it doesn't matter where you put it. Uh, and it's gonna be the dash V flag. So this stands for a volume. There's a couple of different volumes or different types of volumes. But remember, we're using the bind mount, which is a special volume that allows you, allows you to sync a folder from your local machine to a folder in your Docker container. Uh, and so the syntax for this is you do dash V and then you specify um, the local folder or the path to the folder on your local machine. So I'll just say path to folder on local machine, on local, and then we do colon, and then we do path to folder on container. Okay, so kind of like pseudocode, just to, so you guys understand. So this is going to be the location of this folder, right? Because this is the folder that has all my source code and I want to sync that to a folder 
within our Docker container. And that's going to be in the slash app directory because that's where we're going to store all of our source code. So let's hard code those values. Uh, and so here, unfortunately, I can't just do a dot right here. Um, it's not going to register that. It's not going to work. You have to actually pass in the whole path. So if you're using VS Code like I am, you can uh, right click here and then just select copy path. And then you can right click and it's going to grab the entire path uh, in my host machine uh, to this folder. Uh, obviously, I'm going to delete the Docker file section. We just need to get into the node Docker, which is the name of the folder that houses all of my code. And then we do colon and then we do the path to the folder in the container. So what folder do we want to copy it to? Easy. We want to copy it to slash app. Right. And that's so that's all you have to do. You hit enter and it's going to sync your code. However, I do want to show you a couple of shortcuts because that does look a little messy having to type all of this out. And so what we can do is we can make use of um, variables. And so I'm going to delete this. I'm going to show you guys what you can do instead instead of having to type out that whole nonsense. And it's going to be different based off your operating system. Uh, so if you're um, using Windows and you're using the command shell, then what we can do is we can type in percent CD percent. So that's going to grab the current working directory. Uh, so that way I don't have to copy that entire path. Uh, that only works on Windows command shell. Uh, if you're using Windows PowerShell, then you're going to have to type in dollar uh, curly braces, PWD, closing curly braces. That's going to grab the current work, working directory. And if you're on a Mac or a Linux, then you can type in dollar parentheses PWD uh, and then close parentheses. So that's just a shortcut, or you could type out the entire path. Whatever is easiest for you, feel free to do that. So I'm just going to uh, use my percent CD percent. And, all right. And so let's hit enter. And, uh, you know, depending on, you know, what uh, operating system you use here, if you're using Windows, anytime you're doing file sharing, um, you might get this warning. There's a couple of optimizations that you can make. I usually just ignore it for now. All right. So now, theoretically, it should be syncing this entire folder with the slash app directory in our container. Uh, and so uh, let's minimize this. And let me just refresh this. So you can see right now we've got the four. Uh, exclamation points. Let's go back to our code and I'm going to delete the exclamation points. All right. And then after we delete it, let's save it and let's see if I refresh this page, does the changes take effect? So let's hit refresh and it looks like it didn't. So do you guys know why it didn't take effect? Well, let's take a look, right? Because theoretically this command, uh, this flag right here should sync the folder. So we should see uh, this file get synced to our container. So let's drop into our container and take a look at what the file looks like in the container to see if it actually updated, right? Because maybe I was lying to you guys and this does absolutely nothing and I wasted your time. So we log in, uh, let's do an LS. So we've got our index.js and let's print out the contents of the file by typing in cat and then index.js. And if we take a look at that, we can see that, hey, look, it did actually sync our code. It deleted the four exclamation points. So why exactly did we not see the update in our web browser. Well, this is easy. For anyone that's ever worked with Express applications, I'm sure you might have an idea as to what exactly <coughs> caused this problem. Remember, anytime we make changes to code in any Node or Express application, we have to restart the Node process. We did not restart the Node process. We just changed the code and we hoped that it would automatically work, but we had to restart the Node process. Right. And, um, you know, we could go in, we can kill the node process, start it again, but obviously that's inefficient, right? We already have a solution that we already know is going to work. And that is, we're going to make use of Nodemon, right? Nodemon will always look at your code. And if any changes take place, it's going to restart the node process so that the changes are updated in real time. So let's get that set up and installed. I'm going to exit out here and we need to update our package.json file. So let's get Nodemon installed as a dev dependency. And I'm going to do this on my local machine just so that we can have it set up in this file. Uh, so I'm going to do an npm install nodemon dash dash save dev. So this is going to be a dev dependency just because we don't need it to run when we actually deploy to production. 
And remember, I'm just doing this on my local machine right now, just so that we can update my package.json file. All right, so we've got our dev dependency. Now let's go to my uh, package. Well, I'm already in my package.json, but let's set up a few scripts. So we'll do a start, and this will just be the usual uh, node index.js. And then we'll have a dev, which is going to be, whoops, which is going to be a nodemon index.js. So by running nodemon in, in dev mode, it's going to automatically restart uh, index. It's going to restart the node process anytime there's any changes to our source code. Now, as a heads up, when I was uh, doing a dry run of this demo, I did run into some issues on specifically, it looks like Windows machines. So if you're on a Windows machine and for some reason later on in this video, uh, you run into some issues with Nodemon not actually restarting, you may need to pass in the dash L flag. Uh, so that that kind of fixed most of the issues. Uh, if you do run into the issue, just try in the, try the L flag. Uh, if you want to read up on it, just uh, just Google the error message that you get or just Google Nodemon not restarting on Windows for Docker. And they'll give you an explanation for why you need to pass in that flag. But I'm going to keep that in there because I'm running a Windows machine and I did run into that issue. So let's save all of that. And let us uh, let me kill the, the Docker container that we have. So I think there should be one running. So we'll do a Docker RM node-app-f. All right. Uh, so now that we made changes to our package.json, we're going to have to rebuild our image now. So we'll do a Docker. Let me see if I have that command cache someplace. Here we go. Build. So we'll do the Docker build. And notice how it's taking a little bit longer this time. And that's because our package.json file changed. So it had to rerun step three, where we copy package.json and then rerun step four and then rerun step five, because we have to run all the steps after that, because we don't know if changes to this file uh, changed to any of the cache results. So that's why it took a little bit longer this time. But hopefully by now you guys get an understanding of how all the caching works in Docker. All right, so now let's redeploy. Actually, before we redeploy, there's a couple of things that we have to change. I realized I forgot to do this. So um, back in our Docker file, uh, right, we're not going to run node index.js anymore. So in the development mode, we're actually going to run, uh, if you take a look at our package.json, we're going to run npm run dev so we can run nodemon. So let's go back to our Docker file. We'll do um, npm run and then dev. Save that. Sorry about that, guys. We're going to have to rebuild our image again. So let's uh, rebuild it. All right. Uh, and so now let's run a container from that image. Uh, and this time we want to do it with the bind mount again. Let's hit enter. We've got our Docker container. Let's quickly test this out. OK, so the exclamations are gone, which is fine. And let's make a quick change to our code. I'm going to re-add the exclamation points, save it. All right. And if I hit refresh, look at that. So it looks like Nodemon's doing its job. And anytime we make changes to our code, it's automatically restarting the node process. And our bind mount is successfully syncing the code from our local machine to our Docker container.